Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is all about pruning tomato plants. Do you have to prune? No, you don't, but I'm going to go over reasons why you might want to, and I'm going to talk about when you do and when you don't. First of all, we have determinate variety tomato plants. They tend to get to a set height, flower over a short period of time, and then set their fruit and they're done. These are micro dwarfs, a determinate variety, tiny tims, three in this 22 gallon pot. Absolutely no reason to prune this plant. Maybe remove some leaves if you notice diseases or problems, but you just let them grow. Determinate variety tomato plants, you really don't want to prune in any way. Let's take a look at another type of determinate. This is what generally speaking a determinate tomato looks like. It gets to anywhere from two to three feet, maybe a little bit bigger. Lots of flowers forming over that short period of time and then the fruit's going to come in. You don't really need to prune these plants. These are bigger. These aren't micro dwarfs like the ones I just showed you. You could prune out some of the lower leaves for airflow. This is a 22 gallon container. Two plants are in here. I may stake this up. We'll talk about staking, you know, the larger indeterminates because they get six, seven feet tall. But this plant, both of these plants will do pretty well in here. You really don't have to prune them. If, for instance, you started removing stuff from the bottom, you could end up taking flowers and that's going to be future tomatoes. The determinate variety are really grown so that you get the flowers over a week or two period, tomatoes follow a week or two, and then the plant's done. So anytime you're going to be removing any of the suckers, and we'll be talking about this in detail, here's a stem, main stem goes straight up, leaf comes out, a sucker forms right in there, and that's going to be forming flowers. And you can see, let me get that out of the way, you can see the flowers are starting to form here. And it makes this nice L shape, leaf, stem, sucker. A sucker is basically a production stem. It's going to leaf and flower and it's going to do the same thing that I just showed you. And they're going to be everywhere. Anywhere there is a leaf, right here, stem, right in there is a little sucker. If this was an indeterminate tomato, we'll talk about that in a second, I might decide to remove that. So we're not going to really heavily prune determinate variety tomatoes that get, you know, two, three feet tall. Maybe a little bit on the bottom, maybe some of the leaves, not these stems that have flowers on it, if you want to. Pretty much you can let them go. It's really the indeterminate tomato that you may want to prune, and that's really to manage size. Let me show you what happens to an indeterminate tomato if you let it sprawl on the ground. How many tomato plants do you see here? And the answer is, it's one. Instead of taking this plant, it was planted right there, and putting the vine straight up, where the vine goes into the ground, and then no other parts of the vine touch the ground, you typically would train it up this trellis here, or you would put a stake in there, and we'll talk about staking the tomatoes too. As this plant got taller, I just let it fall over, and I'm using this brick right now to press the stem into the ground. I have the leaf right there, the main stem that will continue to grow that way, you know, down the length of the bed. This will be guided to go up the trellis just like this plant and then I do remove some of the leaves this is a indeterminate variety tomato but I'm letting the vine move along here and I'm keeping a sucker you know maybe every 10 inches that I'm letting turn into a full production stem why do that no specific reason except maybe you want to you can buy one plant and train it all the way down your bed letting the different suckers turn into full production stems and they're going to produce leaves and flowers and there's a little fruit right there and you know for the cost of one transplant I'm going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, probably have eight production stems growing all the way up there. All you do is you press the stem into the ground and it's going to root out. When you first do it you might just have to put a brick on there, let it be, keep it watered. This is one way to manage a tomato plant. However, most of us don't do that. I just wanted to let you know that you can let a tomato just trail wherever it wants. You don't need to prune it. Wherever the root touches the ground or wherever the stem touches the ground, it's going to put out roots and this plant's going to get massive. And if you don't have a lot of problems, bugs and diseases in your area, you can do that with a tomato plant. However, this plant, we'll take a look at the bee real quick. 
this plant would take over the entire bed and it's going to be a lot of work. One plant sprawling all over the ground can be a lot of work. It's going to take over the bed. You're not going to be able to grow other vegetables in there. So we prune them. We prune our plants. These plants have been pruned recently. They're going to get pruned again. They're all indeterminate variety tomatoes, not this one. This is a uh, micro dwarf and I'm just going to let this one grow. It's going to flower. It's already flowering. It's already setting fruit. It'll finish up. That'll get removed eventually. But in this space I have a homestead, a uh, what is that one real quick? Old German and I don't know, can't read the one down there. Oh that's a gladiator. They've all been pruned. I don't want one plant taking over the space. I want three different varieties. One reason you prune. You can have plants more closely together, get plenty of tomatoes. Instead of having one plant sprawling everywhere, filling up the space, taking over everything, greater chance for pest and disease, I'm going to prune it a little bit. So I've started removing leaves from the bottom. You can see the single stem comes out of the ground and then we start working our way up the plant. There's just a leaf right there. In there, a sucker was in there. That's going to turn into a full production stem that's going to have leaves, flowers, flowers turn to fruit, more leaves, more flowers and keep going. I don't want that vine to be growing all the way out over this way. So I'm removing the lower suckers. I'll show you more examples of those. So that the base of this plant will eventually have leaves removed up to about here as it gets taller. A nice gap for airflow, keep soil from splashing up onto the leaves and really help it keep, keep the plant healthier. In the meantime, I have the main stem right there. Let's see, get this out of the way. Coming up and then right here is a continuation of the main stem. And you see a leaf coming out, the main stem going up where my thumb is, and that is a sucker. It doesn't really sap the strength of your plants. A lot of people say suckers do that. It just turns into a full production stem. I don't want it. I'm going to snap it out. This is what will keep going up, flowers, and it will continue to grow. This was a sucker. You can see right in there is the leaf. It was a tiny little sucker just like this at once upon a time. I let it grow and it continues to grow. A leaf comes out, another sucker comes out, but that's turning into a production stem and you can see the flowers. So I went from the main stem right there and now it's a double stem tomato plant and I'm going to prune it to be that. So I'm going to have one production stem growing up this way, probably take it to the fence. Another production stem going straight up this pole. Going to get lots of production out of the plant but it's not going to be ma as massive if I just let it fall over and sprawl around. I mean it's a beautiful looking plant. For staking, six foot post, this is jute, just a natural fiber, nice and loose. You don't want to put this really tight against here, it will cause problems with it you know, growing as it gets thicker. But just look how beautiful the plant is. Remove the bottom leaves, I'll remove more leaves, and then I have two stems coming up here. Here's another example of an indeterminate tomato and the main stem, just to classify it, is the stem that goes into the ground. And as it grows, sometimes it's hard to figure out which is the main stem. I think it branched over this way. But here's an example, again, of a double stem. It's the Y that I'm keeping. And I usually keep one main stem going to the right, another main stem, well, one stem going to the right, another stem going to the left above the main stem. So right in here is the leaf and that would be the main stem and right in there is where the sucker formed and I just let it go and it continues into a, a production stem. It's going to flower and I'm going to, you know, just tie it right to the stake. That's how it's going to grow. This one will continue growing out this way. It's already flowering and I will, you know, tie them up so that it looks something like this going all the way up. As time goes on, I kind of let the tomato do what it wants and then I'm actually just cutting out leaves and suckers and different parts of the plant to open up space and it will continue to grow all the way up there. That is plenty of tomatoes. There's no exact way to prune. You don't have to do it one way or the other. Some people just prune as it's going and you got production stems going everywhere. Sometimes they cut the top of production stem off right above the flowers. That works too. 
Some people like to keep one stem, and that's called single stem pruning. I'll show you an example of that. There's no exact way to do it. It's more like an art. It's really up to you to decide how you want to grow your plants. Because I'm containing the size, I'm staking it. If I was going to not prune, I would just let it sprawl on the ground. When you let a massive plant grow all the way up here, you don't take care of it. Disease insects can come in, but more importantly, it's just one root system that is taking care of that plant. When it falls over, like in the example I showed you earlier, roots come out all over the place. So if this vine was going over this way, there'd be roots over there, roots over here, roots over there. That plant is going to be really strong and can take all this additional growth. I do recommend pruning to some degree when you're doing it with just a stem and a root system and you're managing uh, the plant growth up a stake. But it's really up to you. Let's look for a couple more examples of suckers so that you understand it. So here we go right here. That is the main stem of this part. The leaf coming out here and it doesn't have to be the main stem, it's just the stem of the production stem, or the stem of the sucker. Right down there, leaf coming out, sucker will turn into another production stem. And I just want to stress again that this doesn't sap the strength out of the plant. Some people grow a single stem, lots of leaves, so the tomatoes get bigger. The more growth you have, the more flowers you have, sometimes the tomatoes are a little bit slower. If we look over, let's find another example. Right here, here is the main stem for this production stem. The leaf is coming out this way. And notice a leaf is just a leaf. There's no flowers, there's no suckers. Stem continues up this way, there's the flowers. Right in here, that's a sucker. I don't want that. So I'm gonna snap it out. And this plant would go just like this. Leaf, remove the sucker. Down here, main stem, leaf coming out, another sucker. Got to remove that. And I'm just going to keep this main growth going all the way up. There's more flowers forming right up here. And it'll just continue to go up there until I get tired come the heat of the summer. And I just let the tomato plant go. It's really up to you. All right, let's go look for some examples on how I stake up my plants. This is the first one. Just a nice solid T-post. These are eight foot posts. They go about a foot into the ground. These stay here permanently. And I grow one tomato plant, two tomato plant, three tomato plant. This is a six foot box right in here. Here's one example of just weaving a tomato plant up my little trellis that I made out of a deck rail. I'm not gonna have to tie this. I'm not using a stake, but as it gets taller, It'll just get tucked under there. And you can see in this space, that's the main stem that goes all the way down to the earth. We have flowers right there. I'm letting the main stem continue. And I have that second production stem by letting that sucker grow into a production stem. And you can see a little tomato right there, more flowers, and it's that Y shape that I was telling you about. And I will weave one side up this way and the other one up that way. And then I will prune out different parts of the plant as time goes on. Again, pruning is not an exact science. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, and there's no perfection in it. So here's a great example of a tomato that I'm gonna prune into a single stem pruning, just to show you what it is. Main stem, as in the roots are in the ground, and we're going up the plant, coming right out where my finger is, that's the leaf. Main stem, where my thumb is, that is the sucker. It will turn into a full production stem of flowers and tomatoes. I remove it. Right here, main stem, leaf coming out. It's always where the leaf comes out and the stem is that you find the sucker. Remove it. Over on this side, a little bit harder to see. Stem right there, leaf coming out, sucker. Let's see if I can get it. Remove that. Continue up the stem. Leaf coming out, sucker. Continue up the stem, leaf coming out, sucker. All right, this is now a single stem. All the way from the bottom, in every leaf joint, there's no additional sucker growing. Then I have my leaves. The production stem continues, and as it works its way up, you're gonna see more leaves. And I'm just gonna make this a single stem going all the way up here. 
always removing the suckers in the joint. There's just many different ways to do it. These are my cherry tomatoes and I just weave them in and out of the cattle panel. This is a cattle panel arch. Now, cherry tomatoes are indeterminates and they tend to go pretty crazy. They're growing suckers everywhere, they're fast growers, and I don't prune these to single stem or a double stem or a triple stem. I just let them grow. I want mass amounts of cherry tomatoes, but I will just take out chunks of the plant, leaves, um, whole production stems if they're going in the wrong direction and I just allow for airflow to get through here and that's all I do. Again, I'm going to say it one more time, you don't have to over worry about pruning. It's, it's really, there's no perfect way to do it. You're only pruning if you need to control the size of the plant for a specific reason and that's really up to you. Another way I like to support tomato plants is I have my posts in here, so the main stem will go onto that. But I'm also going to let other suckers form production stems, and I'll be weaving them in and out of the wire up here. And it's going to be just like a nice wall of tomato plants. And I can't tell you now how I'm going to prune a plant. I know I'll be cutting back pieces of it just so that I get the airflow going through there. And check out my video, I will put it in the video description on early pruning of a tomato plant and using aspirin spray. And I show you how I'm taking the leaves off the bottom and why I'm doing all that. But I really wanted to do a lot more on identifying the sucker and kind of pruning with respect to that because people get really confused. You're just managing the size of the plant, whatever works in your garden. I think we'll end here. If you were going to just let a tomato go, you let it go across the soil. It's going to root in different places. This is sort of a hybrid approach. I am letting one plant move along here, but I am pruning out the bottom leaves. I am taking out some of the suckers and they're going to be, you know, uh, I'm going to weave them through the cattle panel. But you can do, you know, a hybrid approach. I kind of like this only because there's going to be so much uh, so many root systems that are going to support the whole plant. I just want to see how this does with respect to managing drought and dealing with pests and disease, but it's a great way to grow plants. Not many people do it this way, but this is just another example. Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and prune a little bit here and there. Don't overstress about it and really prune to manage the size of the tomato to work in your garden. Thanks for watching.